Mir doesn't know when to stop. Those quote-unquote security people are at it again. Microsoft brings Office to Chrome OS. And another distro drops 32-bit. Oh, that's no good. But you know what it is? Uh, this yeah. is another great day for Linux, everyone. All right, let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and uh, take that break and talk about all the fun things, maybe some interesting things that we personally found going on in Linux. Maybe you'll find them interesting, too. You know me, I'm Old Man Vin, here at LGC Actual, flipping some bits, joined every week um, by the man on the island. He, he went back. Oh, yes. He, he <laughs> talks sometimes. It's kind of frightening. That that's one Pedro <laughs> Mateus. And uh, what's been going on, buddy? You, you survived another week. I know it's getting cold. Uh, everyone's panicking. Oh, there yeah. might be a little bit of snow. Uh, I don't know about snow because uh, Cambridge is still technically in the southern-ish portion of uh, the British Isle. But yeah, it is. Uh, when I walked out of the house this morning, it was minus two Celsius. So yeah, winter has come. So to speak, <laughs> winter has come on like the next season of Game of Thrones, which will probably be 2025 <laughs> by the time. It's been kind of chill over here. And it's, like I said, it was almost 20 degrees last time I checked before we went live. But um, I think we just need to get right into this. Uh, Let's. Because so, uh, yeah, Mira doesn't know when to stop. No, it really doesn't. It doesn't, man. Uh, the Ubuntu community, uh, they're kind of asking, man. Uh, Grayback, he writes, you know, Mir's work to implement Wayland support. It's going well. It's like, That's still a thing. Okay. Basics are in place. Things mm -hmm. are going. But they want to know some things. They want some feedback. Desktop architecture. Uh, monolithic desktop. Highly modular desktop. Uh, customization. Themings. Uh, required features. And a bunch of stuff like this. Um. Here, here, here's the thing, um, you know, first and foremost, I, I'm glad they're still plugging away at it. It's like, but you, I, mm -hmm. I, listen, I don't hate any, pro okay, there's some projects I don't like a <laughs> lot that could be misconstrued as genuine hate, but at the end of the day, you can't really hate code. Um, I'm glad they're still plugging away at it because the more, the merrier. But if I did have to say this, uh, maybe, maybe you can play, um, Linus's advocate, uh, or whatever the Linux version of this devil's advocate is going to be, because I think if we get down to the real talk with this, is um, why does Mir need Wayland support, Pedro? Because Mir can also work as just a compositing or a composited window manager. And without Mir actively, you know, ramming itself down people's throats uh, with the whole Unity thing. Uh, I'm not opposed to that because, yes, uh, we have, we've heard countless times about the, you know, the history between NVIDIA and the Wayland developers saying that, no, this is the right way to do it. No, this is the right way to do it. And no one really goes anywhere. And if Mir at least for my opinion, if it could bridge that gap, it would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, that's just a positive. It's having more options when it comes to a window manager uh, on Wayland. It uh, Right now on X, we have as many window managers as you could possibly ever shake a stick at. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Wayland, we don't really have all those many. There's um, Weston that it's called, I think. And there's uh, the one that GNOME is using right now. KWIN also supports it. Uh, but, and oh, there's that um, that tiling window manager. I can't remember its name now. Uh, that also had a bit of a, the developer also had a bit of a hissy fit against NVIDIA. Uh, so yeah, no, it would be great to have that much extra option. And Again, now that Mir is not actively forcing itself down people's throats, I actually don't mind it. It's another option for a market that actively needs more window managers, if it is ever to become useful. This is true. That's why I definitely have to say the more the merrier on that. But I also have to play both sides and say, you know, did Mir ever 
gain enough traction in the first place to really continue or justify its existence going from 2017 onward. And I I don't know if I can make that argument, man. It didn't really gain any traction because, well, a lot of people didn't really care. And the few that did actively tried their best to support it and um, use it to do the convergence thing that uh, Unity tried to push for a while. Mm -hmm. Until the IPO became a thing and they decided, you know what, that's just bleeding us money, let's not. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's definitely a thing. So, uh, we talked about Google Drive last week and I said, you know, there's no point in messing with it because they're just going to change something. And you found a project that added an extra layer of nope on top of it. (laughs) Well, it's not uh, exactly a project. This is core functionality of Plasma 5, which I learned because I am running KDE Plasma 5 right now. And it's like, okay, I know that uh, there's some network uh, drive mapping things going on with KDE. Let's see if they have an option for um, Google Drive. And they do. You can actually set, just log into your Google account, uh, give it the permissions it needs, and boom, you're done. Uh, But there's a big issue. You see, the way that our show notes work, uh, Ven is the host, and he shares that folder with me and Jordan and Strider and Empty and all the Patreons that you see that have access to the show notes. You all have that TD Tiny shared folder. Now... um, The KIOG drive for KDE Plasma 5 does not support shared documents just yet. Uh, That is planned functionality. It will happen at some point, but there is an active bug being tracked on the uh, KDE bugs uh, tracker. So I'm assuming they will at some point introduce it. Hmm. Eh, Maybe. I don't know. So so you're saying that it's going to be baked into KDE itself, right? Yep. So, yeah, and it is, it actually does, they do a really good job of making it feel native. Mm-hmm. I guess that's part of uh, including the KDE kitchen sink with everything KDE you install. It's everything relies on that same framework. So the moment that framework is loaded, everything else just works off of that. Uh, it is a very good idea in theory until you consider that this is KDE we're talking about and it doesn't really work all that well. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I'm surprised that some people just, just don't... Well, I don't know, man. How, how do you want to put, put it? KD is a... It's a thing. I like KD back in 1.3 version. It's <laughs> right around there, and you can get off my lawn, kids. Um, lately, I, I think a lot of people left KDE when 4X was rolling out because that was one of the hot yeah. messes of all hot messes um Mm -hmm. and we we get a bunch of a lot of good came from that because we have a bunch of different uh desktop managers out that i wouldn't say spawn from that but kind of spawn from people it's like we need something else other than this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i personally don't use kde i don't like how unified it is same goes for you gnome it's not like we're buddies either i use xfce (laughs) because it's just a scattered mess and any desktop manager that somebody looks at and goes, what's this? I don't know how to use it. Good. Stay off my box. Um, I consider that a win-win. The only thing I'm worried about with this or with any Google Drive implementation, A, you're not going to have 100% functionality, period. Um, B, Google, stop. Come on. Just just release this. <laughs> and three would be if something's going to break, A, I couldn't rely on it. I couldn't set it and forget it. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. They always have yeah, to go back and check it. definitely not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. It, they are, uh, kudos to them, they are actually um, doing a really good job of making this feel as integrated as possible with the file manager. But yeah, there's still functionality missing. There's still a couple of bugs. Some people have been reporting quite a few bugs with the uh, KIO G drive. Mm-hmm. But that was a thing that I found because, well, Ven said that he wanted that integrated experience just opening a file editing it and then closing it down and have it save well kd has a prototype of that it just needs teeny tiny little bit more work definitely could be a thing so uh 
immediately after the show last week. Uh, <laughs> this kind of went down, and we, we, we got to mention it. We're not going to go into any type of yeah. you know, depth with it because it's a slap fight between Keys and Brad Spiegler because they're dropping zero days on each other in public on Twitters. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I got to agree with this. Uh, this is coming from R Linux. All this business in our show notes, you know where to find them. They're on our web zone, linuxemcast.com. I agree with the first comment in this. This is beyond beyond childish. And yeah, both of them really need to grow the heck up. And that's coming from me. So <laughs> what, what, what exactly happened? Yeah, no, it's... So um, uh, Keys Cook uh, originally started uh, this by, during one of his presentations, bringing up a certain zero day in the GR security uh, code. And you probably remember GR Security. They were one of the people who Linus shouted at for being, you know, security people and not actually taking the users into account and actively breaking uh, how certain functionality of the kernel works. It was a whole mess. And, well, it's GR Security. So he dropped that zero day and then GR Security went on Twitter and said, oh, yeah, look what I found and dropped a zero day on um, Keys Cook's code. So, yeah. Basically, we had two quote-unquote security people uh, swinging their E-peens around, uh, seeing who had the bigger security schlong, as it were. And, yeah, no. It, both of them have been on the receiving end of Linus's rants. And mm -hmm. this is just lending more credence to those stern words, let's call them that, that Linus threw at them. And I, here's the thing. Not everyone has to get along. You, you, no, no, no. But <laughs> if you're going to argue, do, do it in private. You know, <laughs> don't, don't do this public <laughs> stuff because that, uh, it's just uh, meh. Not, not, not good for yeah. anyone. Um, so why would I need a GUI app to control my heatsink? Uh, I don't know about your heatsink, unless it's got those LEDs and there's like an LED controller in the BIOS. Well, come on, Maybe man. You'd, oh, what's your like problem? For that? I'm sorry. It's thermal take. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Thermal take makes something yes. else than heat sinks. Oh, yes. Uh, they not only do they make heat sinks, they make gerbils, they make keyboards, they make basically a, any type of accessory you can shake a stick at. Uh, this is uh, the Thermal Take Level 10M, and what it does is actually something very similar to a bit of software I've been using for quite a few years now, which is the Kova. Uh, what did I call it? Ah, it's the uh, Lib Gaming Gear Kova thing that. It basically takes your Rocat gerbils and just lets you control like the color of the LEDs. You have blue on the wheel there, have red at the back of the mouse here. You can control the um, the polling rate of the mouse. You can set all the keys to actual keyboard buttons. You can do all of that. And this is basically the exact same thing, except for the thermal take gerbils. Uh, which is good. I mean, more hardware support, more advanced functionality, uh, not just hardware support, but more advanced functionality for those gerbils that have tons of buttons and tons of uh, functions you can enable. That's good. Yeah, and so if you're one of the few people who, it, well, I shouldn't say few people, because listen, you're basically selling something as an input pointing device on a computer. So yeah, you got to go a bit YOLO and throw some extra swag in that business. Mm -hmm. And you end up with a input device that looks like a starship and with the equal <laughs> amount of lights. If that's your thing, yep. I don't judge you. I judge you and by secretly I don't say anything. Yes, you do judge you judge a lot. You just uh, don't bring it up all the time. Because uh, each to the own. You're not hurting me, man. How libertarian of me. Uh, this is a good thing. This is a neat control thing. Small bug I found with the program. Um if the program crashes, your mouse is going to stop working. So, <laughs> okay, that's significant. <laughs> um, yeah, My yeah. See, even Lib Gaming Gear doesn't do that. If you have a Kova mouse and you've been using it, and you've probably seen that one time that Lib Gaming Gear crashed, 
you lost the advanced functionality. You were hitting the side buttons and you weren't getting like your keyboards or your macros or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could still use the mouse. The right, left, and middle click still work just fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. apparently with my um, <laughs> G500S, uh, five, six, it's got like six buttons. That's almost one too many for my simple little brain. So I'm good. I don't need macros. Nine. I'm easily confused. Yeah, you see, you could say nine, and you're like, yeah, nine. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, little buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, 11 if you count mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. Right. <laughs> so can you make it change colors? It's like, can you cut all the colors yes. off? Because that's all I want. Yes. All right. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. And um, Microsoft. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about Microsoft. Not not that uh, yeah, we enjoy we doing it, it but uh, they've kind of thrown Office Onto the Chromebooks, and yep, yeah, you you can have a hate chubby for Microsoft all you want. This is actually a good thing for Chromebooks, and there's a good thing for mm -hmm. what's running the Chromebooks, which is Linux. Uh, so you're gonna have your Word, your Excel, PowerPoint, and you guessed it, seven dollars a month because Microsoft is at a glacier pace transitioning into a services company. If you don't know that, mm -hmm. they are. Trust me, and. It's in the Play Store. You can put it in your Chromebook. Your two hundred dollar uh, yep. browsing device just got the ability to uh, communicate with the business world. I want to say yes. Uh, so there was a little bit more to this story, which is a while back, uh, people started reporting that the Office apps, even on those Chromebooks that support Android apps. They couldn't install them anymore, uh, and someone uh, tried. Someone who had them all installed removed them and then tried to download them, and it wouldn't work. So they contacted Microsoft, and Microsoft said, "Yeah, we've run into a bit of an issue with the Chromebooks supporting Android, so we're going to pull them back for a little bit to make sure that when we do release them, they work properly." So uh, now, if you have an Office 365 license, you can now get. Uh, Word 2016, Excel 2016, uh, PowerPoint 2016 for as low as uh, seven wet sticky caches a month. It's definitely a thing. And it is, I think, um, an example of Microsoft putting their product where their mouth is. Because if mm -hmm. they tried with a Windows phone, I think that was their last, let's lock everything in. See, Because Microsoft has a very long history of buying their way into the market. Not mm -hmm. necessarily releasing that great of a product, but just throwing enough money at the problem until they end up with something yeah. that's kind of usable. And by that time, everyone's using it. Like, ha ha, see, that's the thing. Uh, but uh, they, they just want their products everywhere. And that was something, uh, uh, who was it? Sasha Novella? Was it? It was Satya Nadella. Nadella. Yes. Um, <laughs> He said a few years back, he's like, let's just get it out, get it everywhere. Let's stop with this. And I'm, I'm this is the wrong show to say this on in users. And I think it's especially in the business. Also, if you're in university, all right, you got to use Word or Excel. or yeah. oh, You can run it in wine. Most of the time you can get away with it. You probably <laughs> get away with using Google Docs, but... Your average person you know, in university or your end user, in especially in business, gives zero gosh and or darns. See, family friendly, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what operating system their application is running on. You know, and yeah, you, and uh, unless you have a very stringent um, board of powers that be. Who go, no, 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 no. See, we're not using anything that either Microsoft or Apple uh, doesn't make because that's not actively supported. I've heard that argument. I've heard that argument so many times and I want to slap myself stupid every time I hear it. But yeah, no, Chromebooks are still a big no-no in certain industries as much as some people would like to just look. It, it works better. Well, it makes than them the a thing. And if you're thinking, if you're dealing with the IT and you got to do, you can power wash these things and not the fun way that involves water you put it's chrome os you can just wipe them instantaneously mm -hmm. you're not really gonna have to worry about viruses oh, yeah. or anything like that when you give them to sales critters because you know they're just as bad as mm -hmm. you know teenagers but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good thing mixed blessing and all that it is subscription service yeah 
uh, it'd be fancy to get into Microsoft for that, but everyone's doing that now. That, that's you hotness. You know, we, we don't own anything anymore. So let's just nope. quit talking about Microsoft and address uh, Windows 10 switchover. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, this is, uh, you may remember that Munich few years back they were the big uh, linux champion because they switched most of the um city's uh, it infrastructure over to linux and they spent some money doing it and there was even a few articles uh a few years after they did that that said yeah uh it paid for itself within three years because we don't have to worry about licenses we don't have to worry about a lot of things people are already trained and then a certain someone who bought their way into office uh, who used to work for Microsoft said, no, 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 no. We're going back to Windows. And, well, the plan is now in place and it will cost them the base price um, 50 million euros. Well, you got to look at this, man. First of all, <laughs> the only reason this is happening, this is the tick for tech. This is 100% politics. This is all this is over. Oh, yeah. This is not over whether or not Linux was working great for them or is Windows, but no. Uh-uh. This is all one political party trying to poke back at another one for another. It's a completely unrelated thing. And, you know, Pedro, isn't it a good thing we don't have to deal with politics in the floss community? <laughs> see what you did there <laughs> uh, uh, no, stay away from reddit um, <laughs> the council says the move to windows 10 will make it easier for source compatible applications and hardware drivers that has been using linux based os linux i think that's what it was called um okay uh <laughs> reduced cost by not having to run a windows and limix client side by side okay now they they have this crossover What's this thing going to cost? 50 million euros. Okay, that's your figure. What they're leaving mm -hmm. out, what they're leaving out, Brad, um, is the 29.9 <laughs> million euro extra, extra just for the licenses, just for the licenses yep. on top of that uh, for Windows, Microsoft Office, the software distribution, print and profile management, identity management, anything related to virtualization and uh in an additional 3.1 mil on testing and training so <laughs> okay so uh the one uh issue that they had with limix that they brought up uh the technical issue was that it was old uh, there were a lot of compatibility issues because some of the infrastructure was still running windows and uh some there were some incompatibilities there, sure. You know how you could have solved that incompatibility? By switching everything over to Linux. Mm -hmm. At that point, oh, look, everything is working. And do you need, do you, if you really need to send those documents over in a, a digital format to another municipality that doesn't have Linux, ship them as a PDF. It'll retain its... Uh, layout whatever uh just create a few editable fields here and there that people can actually edit directly on the pdf they're already paying for that adobe pro license might as well put it to use right well here's my conspiracy theory i think all the microsoft sales weasels and again i don't think this particular instance is microsoft coming in being microsoft doing what microsoft does this I this, mm -hmm. this is just a political thing we can just use it as an example but I do believe Microsoft is actively out there trying to get as many installs locked in as they can because Windows is going to become a service too. And it's going to yep. require a You're little bit have of, to pay a little nearly. extra jingle jangle every month on the enterprise side and uh, end user side. It's going to be tough pulling that one off Microsoft. I look forward to watching you fail the first nine times you attempt it. Um, good luck yeah. uh it, 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 it's going to be a it's going to be a fire and um i'm just sad for all the people caught in the middle of uh, mm -hmm. this political bs so i can imagine the desks of the it people just uh creating a hole um, with their nerds uh, open mandriva 
which is like, wait a minute, that thing's still around? All right, that's cool. Oh, but yeah. it is dropping 32-bit support. And um, no one seems to this panic anymore when 32-bit <laughs> first started fading away from your Kumbuntu's and the likes. Uh, people, Arch. Arch. <laughs> uh, nothing of value here, man. Was terribly lost, uh, but they're talking about LX three hundred three. It is bad, Driva. Yeah, it's a thing, man. Uh, they're going to say thirty two bad uh, apps. Let's see, like Wine, they're going to be supported by your i five fifty six libs. So yeah, stuff like that's still going to work. Yeah. But I mean, you're going to be on your sixty four bit um, processor of business, and I don't know. I, I outside of like digging around in secondhand stores or eBay for retro gaming parts where you're going to find a pure 32 bit processor that you could actually use in 2017. I, I know I've said this before. I'm reading myself, but I'm genuinely curious outside of that one laptop that you somehow uh, probably not for gaming. No, absolutely not. Um, but yeah, they actually did something different, which is they're actively addressing you know, the sticklers like me, when I heard that uh, Ubuntu was dr uh, dropping 32-bit and that Arch was dropping 32-bit, mm -hmm. what are you going to be doing to the 32-bit packages that you still need? Like Steam, like Wine, like a few other uh, ones. And these, they say that, yes, we will retain that... Um, compatibility just using some multi-libs mm -hmm. probably even have a separate repo for the people who actively want it that's awesome uh that said it's open mandriva this is probably one of the very few distros i never really cared about i wasn't even curious i never even tried it <laughs> I, I had heard the name it makes sense though it's a smaller project yeah. it's i mean nothing stopping you from building your own so yeah yeah. yeah. It's one of the good things about Lytics, and I know there's somebody out there with a perfect use case. Go to our contact mm -hmm. section, write us an email for next week's show, and let us know, because I'm really, really curious if there's a yeah. situation. Yeah, give us a sales pitch on 32-bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you, you, no, no, man. Maybe we're, just, we, we're missing out, Pedro. <laughs> the 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 oh, yeah. real hotness is, <laughs> you know, you're, you're sitting on your front porch, you know, with your American spirits, uh, drinking your PBR, <laughs> running your 32-bit <laughs> Linux distribution. It's good times. And um, so uh, before we get out with the main segment, we want to talk, speaking of hipsters, here's something quite hipster you can do. Tis Neaton, open max ill. Okay. Cloud music mm -hmm. player for the Linux console that supports, get this, Spotify, Google Play Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, and whatever a durable is. I don't know. It sounds dirty. Kind of like <laughs> it now. Um, this is 100% streaming done hipster. I'm only kind of half joking. It's available. It's on GitHub. Links and all that business. Again, in our show notes. Uh, this could like kind of be... Uh, useful if you had a... If you have a dedicated... Yeah, if you have a dedicated media server, like say you have a dedicated Plex box. Well, man, I was going to say Raspberry Pi. You absolutely. could throw that on there. And, um, you know, yeah. or you could be realistic about this. Ooh, that is one long thing. When I say realistic about it, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, what I really mean is you can add it to your collection of apps that you've ran exactly once mm -hmm. because, hey, thing X from the terminal. And like, oh, that's neat. And you never use it again because you know you didn't. <laughs> This one does seem to have some functionality because, let's face it, there are a lot of people out there who actively listen to Spotify. Even without paying a single cent, they'll listen to an ad every now and then and just get their music like that. And this is a good way. Uh, if you have that dedicated media box, set it up. Boom. You mm -hmm. can just play it with whatever uh, audio player that supports network streams. Right from your local area network. That's kind of what I was hinting at when I thought about it. It's like, oh, that, that, that's a silly little... I was like, wait a minute. No, you... you all right. Because you, you try to come up with use cases in your brain organ. And that was one of the mm -hmm. things. It's like, yeah, you could definitely make use of that. 
business. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think that's going to wrap us up for the main news. But we do want to thank the beautiful people who are supporting yes. this nightmare train. Well, this one's not really the nightmare train. This is like the nightmare snowflake train. This is the little kid's nightmare train. <laughs> you can do that by going over to LinuxGameCast.com. Smash that support button, fam. Hashtag something. I don't know. We're on Patreon. We got some Amazon affiliate links. It's the holidays. People are buying stuff. If you're going to buy some stuff, consider doing that. We're in the UK. We got the Americas, the Canadias, and Le France. We also have an Amazon wish list. Oh, yeah. We got some stuff up there because we're always looking to upgrade the studio. And man, you guys have really helped us out with that. Uh, got to give a little shout out this week. I need to stop right there because we prepared. Um, hang on. Let me find it. Ooh. Where's it at? Boop. This showed up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this showed up. Uh, we were talking last some week. Rules. In mag. Because uh, you get to write a little gift thing. We like showing that off. He says, uh, yeah. hang on. Hi, fine, upstanding cannibal buddies. Can't say that word on the show. Uh, enjoy <laughs> your gift. And we quite do. Got it right here, man. Check it out. Thank you. Do, do, do. Thank you very much, Ed Mag. Uh, there and if are you, some audio noodles. These are they XLR will be put to, to use very, very soon. XLR to 3.5. Backup audio for because we have a USB running out of the mixer, but that's going to let us do some cool things. Thanks everyone for that. Um, what else? So yeah, that's just our standard. If you want to go check out our wish list, this is some stuff that we're planning on buying. If you want to game shark us on that, enable yeah. cheat mode and all that. But what we want to get to is the 106 beautiful party people making this show possible Woo-hoo! because this show was a Patreon goal that we nailed and we've been doing it for over a year with your support. 106 of you kicking in 213 Indeed. wet stinky caches. Every, every sexy Saturday night, maybe gaming's not your thing. This is your thing. If it works one way or the other, we got a bunch of Patreon uh, rewards English, man. I am not Englishing very well today, Pedro. But we Discord access, audio access, early access to um, the shows that we do on Tuesday and Thursday for the recorded versions, custom RSS feed. That's the thing. You get access to our pre-pre-super shows. And mm-hmm. we try to throw a bunch of little rewards in there to kind of give you some value back because you are making this possible. Do check out Meet the Freemans. That is up for patrons. If you ever wanted to watch uh, Pedro and myself <laughs> play cooperatively, I mean, that, see, it's already a bad idea. <laughs> Broad strokes around cooperatively. And, yes. <laughs> and if, if that wasn't a bad enough idea... We invite all of you to come join us, all of our fellow patrons, to pile in. I think we ended up with like five people, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. We went to Ravenholm. It was uh, terrifying. We made it all the way through to Ravenholm. (laughs) There was much whinging, (laughs) but we made it through. You you can definitely pop in next week. Uh, You can watch or you can participate because we're going to be in cars and uh, that poor Synergy mod's probably going to flip out. Oh, yeah. I do want to (laughs) say check out our calendar for that. Um, Just hit schedule at LinuxGameCast.com. But one final, final reminder for this month is... Could you go ahead and pop that mm-hmm. link into IRC and or Discord? What I'm about to say is uh, make sure if you're in Discord and Discord's your jam, that's where you like hanging out. We've tried to make it work back and forwards with IRC and all that. With bots, thank you, Empty. We love you. Call me. Um, yeah. Make sure you link it with the stupid monkey bot. And Pager's going to put a link in there. There'll be a link in the show notes. That There's way- there. Keep everything organized and situated because if you're not linked with the stupid monkey bot, we've been saying it all month. It's just going to, Discord's going to kind of go dark for you. If you don't care about Discord or if it's yeah. something you want to go back and do later, that's 100% cool too. This isn't um, like nightmare scenario or anything. We're just making. Yeah, this is just for those people who actively want to. Uh, participate in our discord because there's always a ton of people there all over the week uh so if you want to keep on you know talking well, what pedro the, pedro's uh, trying nice, to say nice what, what he's trying to say is we're making the slightest attempt at organization and being adults and slightest just a bit. <laughs> okay let's dive into a slice of book pie Ooh, you know what? Real, real nice looking pie i am kind of impressed by that i'm not, that doesn't even make me angry that is uh I don't know. Yeah. 
But then again, I'm curious. Probably uh, apple pie. I don't judging know. Judging by the chunks. Well, all right. So so it's on a plate for uh, listening at home. I was uh, <laughs> thinking that thing is massive than I saw the plate. So maybe not. Maybe not. No, that's a party plate. It's a teeny tiny. <laughs> Coming up first, uh, Steve-O. All right. Speaking of Discord, Steve-O threw oh, this in um, Discord earlier today, and I had to put it in. Tell, tell, tell me about it. Never heard of it. Yeah, so you may remember a while back, especially if you're on Google+, Plus, you may have seen a little project that someone tried to get one of those old talking Furby dolls to work with um, the Google Assistant, uh, OK Google, uh Alexa. Well, uh, they got it working with Alexa reliably. And there's a video, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes for the article. Don't you worry. Um, and it's just, it's so creepy. I mean, without the fur on, you can almost, oh, it's a cute robot with some eyes. That's, that's great. The moment they put the fur on, it's, you have Furby talking to you in Alexa's voice with the grinding of gears in the background. Yeah, there you go. That's what you should do. <laughs> light it on fire. <laughs> Just light it on fire. <laughs> uh, that's actually one of the things he says in the um, in the article is that he actively tried to keep the heat down to a minimum because all those gears and all that circuitry does get a little bit hot. So he had to get creative with the space that he had to work with. Um, but yeah, no, if it doesn't catch on fire of its own volition, you should consider it a favor and just, you know, toss it in the fireplace or the oven, the microwave, whatever you happen to have handy. Just throw it in there. <laughs> no, that's way too creepy. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I mean, really the only practical use case i can come up with for this is having it and not telling people in your household what it does and then you have to because i know you can teach alexa skills but if you could mm -hmm. um get a different voice for alexa yeah i that i totally want, want that project because i saw the uh the Siri ad when apple introduced siri mm -hmm. but someone had dubbed over the siri bits with glados I want that so bad. I want GLaDOS personal assistant. <laughs> I don't know if they still make it. Uh, one of the, when I used to drive around a lot, I always carried a uh, sat nav thing with me. This is before smartphones, kids. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Tom, Tom, because I had a couple of voice packs of different actors mm -hmm. that I bought because my life was pretty miserable because I didn't, all I did was fly around and drive and, and that's how I kept myself entertained. Quit judging me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, Alexa furries, uh, <laughs> furbies, furbies. <Yes. laughs> oh no, I'm not touching that one. I'm just moving on to this next story. I don't know what you're talking about, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's interface. Well, the next one pie. is, uh, yep, it is. It falls into the neat category, but why would you do it? Uh, it is a Raspberry Pi Zero with a custom PCB below it and a very big, very old school style blue connector. And if you read the title, you know that that interfaces with the C64. Yep. The Commodore Zero. And basically you can turn your Commodore Zero into full into a full blown um, just Raspberry Pi pass through because uh, you have a TV that doesn't have an HDMI channel and you need that old analog output. I honestly, I don't know. I really can't think of a use case of this. Listen, sometimes, of, you know, sometimes I'm at work and I am busy working on my C64, but I need access to a <laughs> Linux terminal and I don't want to switch computers. I need my Linux pass through <laughs> on my C64. Well, you can uh, probably justify it then because uh, this is still cheaper than that uh, C64 quote unquote remaster that whoever holds the rights to Commodore nowadays is. That wasn't selling a C64, for that was a Windows box shoved in a mold. Yeah. But he, he, <laughs> uh, here's what uh, I want yeah, to no, know, Pedro. This is definitely. Can you then. With your Raspberry Pi, can you have a C64 emulator installed in your Pi Z? So you could uh, C64 while you were <laughs> C64. Some, then an exhibit shows up and things just start getting weird. And 
Pieception. Pieception. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to tell yeah, us no, about... you could totally run that C64 emulator off of the Pi, passing it through to the uh, C64. And at that point, you start to crave for that for those like 80 milliseconds of latency that you get out of the Raspberry Pi usually, because that's going to go up mm. exponentially. Mm. So if you would like to talk to us exponentially, you can head over to our contact section, fill out the bits. It's pretty easy. We got a couple of categories in there for this particular show. You want to check out LWDW. Maybe you need some relationship advice. Mm -hmm. It's also an option. If you're a game developer contacting us for the Saturday show, please read or your emails will be ignored. We didn't get much this week, Pedro, but we got a kind of a long one from uh, Viratunda. Yes. What does he say, man? Veritanuda, yes. <laughs> well, he's uh, saying that uh, you're wrong. Uh, last week we were talking about uh, big companies going after, uh, like, when we talked about the uh, Cody add-ons being shut down and being sent DMCA's and people just giving up because they didn't want to fight them. We, uh, well, Ven specifically said that um, the biggest argument against that was easy uh, ease of use. Uh, the more easy to use something is, the more likely those big companies or like the Motion Picture Association of America, the Record Industry Association of America, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, they are far more likely to go after you if it is easy to use than you know just using a standard. BitTorrent client. And Verita disagrees. And he says, you're wrong on why they don't go after uh, Torrent client programs. They dare not take the case to court because if slash when they lost trying to prove an illegal tool, uh, it would set a strong precedence where uh, they can no longer shake down people for money by threatening to take them to court. Uh, you see, that would make sense if uh, corporations made sense. You see, the moment you're a corporation and you have access to millions or billions of dollars with, you know, snap of a finger, uh, you literally throw money at a problem until it disappears. And so long as those corporations have that money to throw at that problem, they don't really bother going after the complicated stuff that only the techies get, like a BitTorrent client. But the perfect example is actually... When you have a BitTorrent client that is easy to use, like Popcorn Time. They went after well, hey, Popcorn man, I, Time I, like it was... I, I well, think he's popcorn. trying to say what they don't want is precedence. They don't want to set precedence with saying... No, oh, no. Of course they don't. <laughs> no. And I, I, I get his point 100%. But if something gets too easy to use, and it re it's kind of back to my point and too many people are using it, then it becomes worth the risk. Now, you don't take them mm -hmm. first. And first, what you do first, Pedro, is you try to scare them. Mm -hmm. You don't try to sue them. You yeah. threaten to sue them. Your average person is like, boom, instantly going to tap out. Not an issue. Done. Okay. Yeah. But when you have something as widespread as like the, uh, what were we talking about last week? Those little, um, the Cody boxes. Yeah, the third-party ones mm -hmm. that come preloaded with all the pirated stuff. <laughs> when it gets too easy like that, you go after Cody? I mean, same reason, could you go after the makers of Transmission or Deleuze or something like that? <laughs> I, I just... Mm, I, I don't know. I don't know. If I had the solutions, we probably wouldn't be doing a podcast on Wednesdays, you know? Yeah, and you can still totally send those DMCA's, and like Ven said, most people will tap out right then and there, because let's say you get hit with a DMCA from the MPAA, you can say, you know what, screw those guys, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Regardless of how strong a case you are, if they think you're a teeny tiny individual, you will be sued. They will throw money at that problem until you go away, and they have a lot of money to throw at that problem. Yeah, they don't want to set that precedent, but they are going to bury you in legal fees if they have to. Hey, man, you got the best criminal justice system money can buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta love it. Everyone's different. That's always a fun thing. If you disagree, yeah. agree, or kind of don't know what that was all about, send us some feedback. We told you how to do it. 
smash that contact button. You can leave some YouTube comments. Not a guarantee that I'll see him to Adam. And I don't know, Pedro, I think has added like three or something, or he might just argue with you in the YouTube comments. Yeah, I will probably argue with you on the YouTube comments. <laughs> it's definitely. It's what bit. they're there for, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to get out of here, but we'll see you next week. It's been fun. Yeah. Bye. But before we go, you get to see all these lovely, lovely people. Well, that, that's Ven. He could be lovely. I'm not lovely, that's for sure. But then, then we get the Shat Realm Dynamic and the executive producers. These these are the people who give us all them. Um, these are the people who support the cash. show and make it possible, and we thank them yep. profusely. This is how we buy they our gold plated Lamborghinis. They are wonderful and crazy, and we love them. <laughs> Yeah, you lot are awesome. We gotta figure and it out. And you made the show possible. Never forget that. Gotta figure out what your issue is with your audio.